This is Michael Borenstein, and I'd like to invite you to register for my workshop on meta-analysis. You'll learn how to conduct a meta-analysis, how to report the results, and how to avoid common mistakes. But more importantly, you'll learn to think about meta-analysis in a whole new way. Here are some comments from people who have attended my workshops. Constance J. Dallenberg of Alliant International University. As a professor of statistics, I was unsure whether to take the initial online course in meta-analysis, thinking that it might either be too dense and jargon-filled to be interesting, given Dr. Borenstein's impressive credentials and knowledge base, or too basic, given that I was already teaching a course. As I finish the series now, however, I am awestruck by the quality of this offering. Dr. Borenstein is quite simply a master teacher, so he offers complex material in a completely comprehensible form, the best of both worlds. I picked up details on the statistics, the use of CMA, and the theory behind the statistics, but I also, hopefully, will model the style and clarity of his teaching style in my own work in the future. Drew Riddle, Texas Christian University, Fort Worth, Texas. A very clear, usable way to approach meta-analysis. As a non-statistician, I found this course very understandable and applicable to my work in systematic reviews. Dr. Borenstein has a gift of being able to clearly explain difficult concepts. This is a fantastic course. On day one, we'll cover the following topics. What a meta-analysis is and how to perform one. The difference between fixed effect and random effects models. How to report the results of a meta-analysis. And how to use a forest plot to understand and communicate the results of a meta-analysis. For example, this is an analysis that looks at the impact of Ritalin on cognitive functioning for adults with ADHD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. You will learn how to create and interpret a forest plot that looks like this. The diamond reflects the mean effect size and its confidence interval, while this line reflects the prediction interval or the dispersion in effects. The mean effect size falls in this range, but in any single population, the true effect size could fall anywhere from here to here. You'll also learn how to display the summary information in this kind of plot. The mean effect size is estimated to be here. The confidence interval tells us that the true mean could fall anywhere from here to here. The confidence interval is an index of precision. It tells us how precisely we have estimated the mean. It says nothing about how widely the effect size varies. That is addressed by this line which shows the distribution of true effects. At one extreme, there are some populations where the impact of the treatment will be trivial. At the other extreme, there are some populations where the impact of the treatment would be exceptionally strong. When the effect size varies this widely, we need to focus not on the mean, but on the dispersion in effects. First, we have to report how much the effect size varies. And if we have coded for moderators, we might be able to use subgroup analysis or meta-regression to see what moderators are associated with the magnitude of the effect. You'll also have the opportunity to run a meta-analysis from start to finish. And finally, we'll discuss common mistakes in meta-analysis and how to avoid them. On day two, we'll discuss how to compare the effect size in subgroups of studies. For example, this again is the Ritalin analysis. This is the mean effect size for studies that enrolled one type of patient, and this is the mean effect size for studies that enrolled a different type of patient. I can then compare the two means using various computational options. And we'll discuss what conclusions we can draw from this comparison. We will also see how to use meta-regression to assess the relationship between covariates and effect size. Then we'll work through a series of case studies, including some from medicine and some from the social sciences, 
until you're comfortable with the logic and confident in actually running and interpreting the analyses yourself. And finally, we'll discuss how to avoid common mistakes related to these issues. On day three, we'll discuss the following. How to work with studies that report effects for multiple subgroups, outcomes, or time points, and for studies that compare two or more treatments to a common control group. How to assess the potential impact of publication bias. How to decide whether or not it makes sense to perform a meta-analysis. Limitations of the random effects model. And how to avoid common mistakes. At this point, you're probably thinking, Michael, that all sounds good, but are you going to discuss common mistakes? Well, I can put your mind at ease about that. The answer is yes. In fact, let's look at one example right now. Consider this analysis comparing a treatment versus a placebo. An effect size of zero means that the treatment had no effect. Anything to the right of zero indicates that the treatment is helpful and anything to the left of zero indicates that the treatment is harmful. An effect size in this range would be considered trivial. An effect size in this range would be considered clinically useful but moderate. And an effect size in this range would be considered very useful. Most papers focus on the mean effect size with its confidence interval and fail to properly address the dispersion in effects, the heterogeneity. This is a mistake with potentially serious consequences. Suppose the results of the meta-analysis look like this. Let's call this analysis A. This is the mean effect size and its confidence interval. Focusing on these, we might report that the treatment is very effective. Now, let's consider a second analysis. Let's call this analysis B. This is the mean effect size and its confidence interval. Again, we might report that the treatment is very effective. So, when we focus on the mean and its confidence interval, analysis A and analysis B appear to be identical to each other. By contrast, consider what happens when we look not only at the mean effect size, but also at how the effect size varies across populations. This is the same analysis A that we saw before, but now we add the distribution of effects. We can see that the treatment has essentially the same effect size in all populations. And we can report that in all comparable populations, the effect size will fall close to 1.0. By contrast, this is analysis B, and again we add the distribution of effects. Here, the mean is close to 1.0, but the effect size is moderate in some populations and exceptionally strong in others. We need to report that this is the case and possibly try to identify factors that are associated with the variation in effects. More generally, this kind of plot allows us to distinguish between cases where A, the treatment is always clinically useful, and B, the treatment is clinically useful in some cases but not others, and C, the treatment is beneficial in some cases but actually harmful in others. In the example shown here, Papers typically report that the effect is statistically significant, and they'll mention that there is high heterogeneity. When they do that, the take-home message of that paper would be that the treatment works. By contrast, when we're working with this plot, it becomes clear that while the treatment is beneficial in some cases, it is actually harmful in others. And this becomes the take-home message of the analysis. In sum, this plot helps the user understand and communicate a much more complete and appropriate picture of the results than we would get by focusing on the mean and its confidence interval. You'll learn how to create this plot and send it to PowerPoint or Word. I should emphasize that this example, where the effect is statistically significant, but the treatment is harmful in 40% of populations, is not theoretical. This example is actually based on a recent paper that looked at a treatment for patients hospitalized with COVID. While the treatment is associated with a decreased risk of death in 60% of populations, it is actually associated with an increased risk of death in some 40% of populations. 
In other words, by focusing on the fact that the effect is statistically significant, the paper misses the point that the treatment might harm nearly as many people as it helps. We will study this paper and others like it to see how these results should have been reported and what we can actually learn from the analysis when it's done properly. That's an overview of what we cover in the workshop. But what I think is more important is the overall structure of the workshop. Many attendees tell me that the course stood out for being engaging, interesting, and fun, as well as being informative. I use real-world examples from the social sciences, medicine, epidemiology, criminal justice, and other fields. And I choose examples that are compelling. I'll be using examples that you've read about in the news because they've generated controversy, and examples that look at treatments for COVID because this is something of interest to all of us. We will look at meta-analyses that companies have used as proof that their drugs were effective, and we'll discuss whether these claims were justified. I try hard to make myself available to all attendees over the course of the workshop and afterward. I sometimes get emails from people who attended the course years earlier and are having trouble getting a paper published because the reviewer has asked for something that is incorrect. I'm always happy to discuss and write a letter to the editor. Here are some comments from attendees. Sharon Carey, Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in Sydney. This is an excellent course, well presented, step-by-step -step and easy to follow. Great to have all the case studies in paper and soft copy. Michael is extremely knowledgeable and an excellent teacher. I liked the stories, real life examples, and openness to answer questions. He was able to make a dry topic very interesting. Also appreciated a grounded clinical perspective of what meta-analysis results infer. Rebecca Lazarus, Macquarie University in Sydney. I found this workshop incredibly helpful. This workshop has increased my confidence in conducting and interpreting a meta-analysis. Further, Michael's generosity with his time in taking questions during the breaks and after hours were an unmeasurable benefit to this workshop. The additional benefits were all the resources provided as part of the workshop. These have been and will continue to be so incredibly helpful. Carrie Adamson's University of Connecticut. Great program and a great workshop. Combined content about meta-analysis with hands-on application and examples. Dr. Bornstein makes complex and nuanced analysis easily understandable. To date, over 2,000 people have attended my workshops. They include people who are new to meta-analysis and people who have published many meta-analyses in the past. They include people working in the social sciences, medicine, epidemiology, and other fields. They include physicians, professors, and students. They include people from universities and hospitals in the US, the UK, Australia, China, Japan, Hong Kong, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Korea, among others. They include people conducting research at pharmaceutical companies and companies working on gene therapy. They include people working at governmental agencies such as the NIH, the FDA, and the CDC. In fact, I've delivered this workshop at each of those agencies. Some people had limited statistical background and had been concerned that the course would be too advanced for them. Almost all of these people told me afterward that their fears were unfounded. Carol Nowson, Deakin University, Australia. Unraveled some of the mysteries of meta-analysis with practical hands-on examples that could be easily understood by those of us who are not statisticians. Karen Jensen, Harvard Medical School. Great course material, great lectures by Michael, well-prepared and clear, great interactive opportunities with Michael, very informal and friendly atmosphere that makes you listen and dare to ask questions. Perfect mix of lectures and practice. Alan J. Lips of Abilene Christian University. I really enjoyed this workshop. The organization of case studies and the ability to follow along using comprehensive meta-analysis 
have made this an outstanding learning experience. Dr. Borenstein has that rare quality of being able to discuss very complex topics in understandable language. He answers questions very cordially. In short, this has been a great learning experience. Alan Gordon, Agri-Food and Biosciences Institute. Michael is an excellent presenter. Although being a complete novice to the subject, I left the course with a thorough understanding of the topic and a real desire to apply it to my own area of work, which is research in the agri-food sector in Northern Ireland. Some people had already published several meta-analyses before attending the workshop and were concerned that the course would be too basic for them. Virtually all of these people told me afterward that they had learned a great deal from the workshop and were very grateful that they had decided to attend. Evelyn Wong, Castle Park Hospital in Hong Kong. I used to work with meta-analysis and I have never found any other materials more brilliant than this two-day course. The lecturer, Dr. Borenstein, is very enthusiastic in helping out with students, clarifying their concepts personally, and he welcomed all sorts of questions in a manner that the students will not feel embarrassed. This course is good for both beginners as well as professionals who have already mastered some skills in meta-analysis. David Eckers, Durham University. Having written meta-analysis in the past, but being a clinician academic, the course has been excellent for me. It was pitched at a level I could follow, helped me understand approaches I use, and common pitfalls. I would recommend it for any clinical academic who is interested in conducting meta-analysis. Dr. Munira Alganim at Kuwait University. This course is an eye-opening experience regarding how to use meta-analysis, especially in the field of health sciences. Tons of information that would equip you with the tools to carry out a meta-analysis with ease and confidence. A must-take course. I recommend to all my colleagues. Thank you so much, Michael. Christina Polito, WHO. Michael clearly explained some of the basic concepts of meta-analysis. For example, random versus fixed effects models, interpreting heterogeneity scores, subgroup analysis, in a way that made these sometimes confusing issues clear. He also exposed some of the myths and mistakes that are common in many published meta-analysis. David R. Rutledge at Global Strategic Solutions This course really delivered beyond my expectations. On the one hand, the course explains the science behind meta-analysis. Then, on the other hand, the course teaches how to use the CMA program to perform the analysis. Dr. Michael Borenstein uses easy-to-understand examples to teach the principles of meta-analysis. The section on heterogeneity was excellent. I appreciate how he uses simple logic to teach these principles. Syed S. Haig, Director of Graduate Programs in Biomedical Informatics at UMDNJ. The meta-analysis seminar was extremely clear, informative, and helpful. We were especially pleased that it was at an appropriate level for the faculty and researchers who were from various areas of specialization in health and medical sciences at our University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey. Thank you. Sylvain LaRoque, Senior Biostatistician, Shire. Excellent way of approaching meta-analysis, rendering it very simple, using a very nice and user-friendly software. Everything is in it. You might want to know something about me. I'm a co-author of the text, Introduction to Meta-Analysis. The first edition was published by Wiley in 2009 and became the best-selling text ever published on meta-analysis. The second edition was published in 2021. I'm a co-editor of the text, Publication Bias in Meta-Analysis. I'm the author of the text, Common Mistakes in Meta-Analysis and How to Avoid Them. I've contributed chapters to many books, including the Handbook of Research Synthesis and Meta-Analysis and Systematic Reviews in Health Research. I'm the author or co-author 
of papers on meta-analysis, including the following. A basic introduction to fixed effect and random effects models for meta-analysis. Basics of meta-analysis. I squared is not an absolute measure of heterogeneity. And in a meta-analysis, the I squared statistic does not tell us how much the effect size varies. I'm the primary developer of the software Comprehensive Meta-Analysis, or CMA, initially published in the year 2000 and now in its fourth major release. The software is used by tens of thousands of researchers throughout the world. I'm the PI on numerous grants from the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, to develop methods and software for conducting and teaching meta-analysis. I'm a founding member of the Society for Research Synthesis Methodology and served as its president in 2017 to 2018. And I've been teaching these workshops since 2005. Our website is metaanalysisworkshops.com. And that's where you can get more information about the workshop. Dates are currently scheduled for Australia, the United States, and the United Kingdom, but this is updated on a regular basis. I've referred several times to my text, Common Mistakes in Meta-Analysis and How to Avoid Them. This book is available on Amazon, but you can also get a copy for free. Just go to our website and click the appropriate button. We will send you a PDF copy of the book immediately. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at this address. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video.